hello people i am bharat acharya welcome to our new lecture so today we are doing arm programming yes we all know arm is the future we learn intel processors intel microcontrollers in the beginning because they are very easy to understand that's why we learn all the concepts of add subtract multiply divide block transfers uh, serial communication timers interrupts etc we have done that we done that with ad51 we've done 40 plus videos and we've learned it in and out now the modern world uses new age microcontrollers the most leading one amongst all of them is arm you don't need to hear it from me uh, look around what's going on the tech industry is dominated by apple it's gone far ahead of even its closest rivals one of the reasons where apple became so powerful is in the last decade and a half where it started its shift from intel processors to arm processors no i'm not belittling any intel processor over here we've all started learning from that but that was the past that was history the future as apple says it is all arm today every apple device whether it's a phone whether it's a macbook whether it's the ipad whether it's the airpods whatever it is or the watch they all use arm processors and apple being the market leader the others simply follow the trend even the latest samsung processors or the ones that are used in various android phones are all based on arm architecture so much that even intel is using arm architecture for its latest cutting edge processors so this is where the world is headed and that's where you want to be when you sit for that placement interview yeah you know ad51 very well good you already above the rest you know arm instruction set great you've done arm programs that is awesome that's what gives you that edge over all the other students so that's what we're going to do today and as always we're not going to do programs just on the board that is boring we want to do it on the simulator on the interface where we run our program test it for different values check out the result play with the program uh, there's nothing left for imagination you change the instructions you see where others make a mistake one small s you know which s i'm talking about the difference between add and adds or move and moves yeah that s i'm talking about that one small s or the one small 0x or the one small you know hash these tiny things in the instructions one change and the meaning of the whole instruction changes sometimes it even becomes an invalid instruction sometimes worse it is still a valid instruction but it do something else altogether so these are the places where others make a mistake you will see those mistakes you will understand how to rectify those mistakes and avoid them when you are doing programming nothing works better in programming than doing it on a simulator now there are various simulators the most pop popular one is skill but as a student if you want to use skill you'll have to take the paid version which uh, most students don't want to do it that's another reason why they run away from arm programming or if you take the uh, 30 day trial period yeah within 30 days you will finish it none of them are necessary there are simple simulator softwares there is a website that i'm going to give you just like we did for edsim simulator for ad51 you don't need to install anything you don't need to download anything it's a simple web browser based simulator and it works exactly like keel in fact is far more user friendly so i'm going to show you that link i'm going to give you that link we'll work it on that simulator and we're going to run programs now what are the programs we're doing today the first one add two numbers this is our quintessential hello world program like how in c java etc python you start programming with hello world assembly programs you see in ad85 ad all the languages that have taught it starts with this so add two numbers will be our first most basic program we're going to do it in various ways uh, add two numbers based in registers add two numbers based in variables which are stored in memory it can be in a random location it can be in a given location it's question the same question can be asked in various ways in the exam you see in question papers sometimes they just say add two numbers sometimes they say specifically add two numbers stored at location so and so and so and so store the result at so and so and the carry it they give addresses so i'll show you how to handle all of those situations in one program remember all the courses that i've taught the first program is not about the skill of programming it's more about getting used to the interface this is where i'll show you the whole simulator how to write a program how to compile it how to run it at at one go or run it in step by step execution you know what is step by step execution right that is what uh, helps us to spot 
run time errors logical errors those kind of errors which cannot be seen during compilation but that do not give us a correct answer so for that we do step by step execution i'm going to show you all of that seeing the results in decimal hexadecimal going and checking out registers going and checking out memory all those things which a programmer needs to do during programming i will expose all of that to you in the first program so that you are comfortable with your playground you now you know your game now you got to play after this we going to do big program so this is the only one that may not be an exam question okay it could still be i have seen it it could still be but mm, you got to be really lucky to get a question like this once you know this and once you know your simulator properly then we'll get into more serious programs add a series of numbers yeah this is a popular exam question this is what this is a, doing a total of a table or of a list of numbers this is something that we do in every program like a cricket match every one score and then your final score or any kind of tallying or any kind of accounting or whatever you do this is something that is done so often so you need to know the size of all the files in your memory and the total size occupied etc and so on you know where you how many places you use you do add a series of numbers so that's the program that we're going to do uh, we're going to do a program for a series of like say four numbers what works for four numbers will work for 400 numbers then it's just the loop count that changes so again the series can be stored anywhere in the memory they may be sequential they may be random look at these numbers 40 then 44 the are they sequential <laughs> if you having a doubt whether they are sequential or not you need to know arm properly yes they are of course sequential in arm every data is 32 bits and it's 30 by default so if it's 32 bits, that means it's going to take four locations. So 40, 41, 42, 43, which is the first data itself. Then the next data is 44. So it is sequential, though it may not look like with a gap of four, it is actually sequential. Anyway, anyway we'll, we'll discuss all the all those details. So this is your series of numbers. You're going to add them. You're going to get a sum and you're going to get a carry, which will be the higher byte of the sum or the higher word of the sum. So will be stored at two locations here and here. Uh, again, it can be any locations. I'll show you how to change the location. It's very, very simple. Then we're going to go ahead and do another program that is a block transfer program. You know what's the meaning of block transfer program, right? The, you know, when I, I, I keep giving uh, introduction to what I'm going to do on my Instagram page as we st start developing the PPDs, I give screenshots. So uh, the moment I posted this, I think two, three days back, someone immediately texted back, someone who's an 8051 student and said, sir, uh, how important are block transfers? Why do we do them in every processor? Please answer, are block transfers important? This is copy paste, one of the most frequently done operations in any computer, in any phone. While typing messages, you copy one person's message and send it to someone else. Just giving an example, or you're sending your image, or you are, even if you're sending an image, what are you doing? You're copying a whole image from your memory, sending it to your buffer where it's, or your WhatsApp buffer, or any kind of software that you're using, and then the image goes to your friend. And or copying a song from one place to the other, or copying a file, and so on. So copy paste is something that we do all the time. Every block of data that you copy and paste it somewhere, runs the same program at the end of the day. What changes is the source address, the destination address, the size and the permission, then those parameters are there in the modern software of an embedded system. You will learn them as you move ahead in your journey of embedded system. So at the core of all those transfers is this same program, your quintessential block transfer program. How do you do block transfer? Make a register point towards the source block, make a register point to the destination block, make a register use as account and make a register use to hold the data temporarily. Take the data, store the data, increment the address, increment the address, decrement the count and put it in a loop. Yes, that's the algorithm of a block transfer, no matter what the processor is, whether it's 8085, 8051, 8086 ARM or Pentium or 386, whatever. They all, the algorithm is the same. The implementation changes because the instruction set is different. So we're going to do the block transfer program for ARM. Very popular. Uh, in 10 last 10 papers i've seen this twice in mumbai university um, i keep talking about mumbai university because i am based in bombay and my physical students are all in bombay so i see those papers very often but that doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't appear in different universities these are the most frequently asked questions from all uh, whoever learns these processors these are the first programs you need to know of course then we'll be doing more the next program is just a variation of a block transfer that's called an inverted block transfer. Yeah, inverted. See, did you notice the difference? Earlier it was 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, copied here 1, 2, 3, 4. Now it is reversed. 
Your source block had one, two, three, four, but your destination block has four, three, two, one. What's the idea? Your first pointer points over here, your second pointer points at the end. Take this data, store it over here. Increment this pointer, but decrement this pointer and put this in a loop, which means if you're a smart person, what do you understand? It's the same program as a block transfer with a little bit of twist, a little instructions to be tweaked here and there. And that's it, it becomes reverse block transfer. That's also called inverted block transfer. Uh, this itself is the prelude or the first half of a palindrome checking program. If I have to check this thing in the palindrome, what do I do? I reverse the blocks and then simply compare those two blocks. If they are the same, that means it's a palindrome. So if you know a block transfer and an inverted block transfer, you practically also know a palindrome program. So these are the programs that we're going to be doing today. Again, I'm saying not just on the blackboard, not just me on some PPT screen on the simulator where we're going to run it, put different values and test whether our results are correct or not. All right. Now, you want to watch this whole lecture and learn all of ARM, um, come on my website, bharatacharyeducation.com. The link is given down below. These are the various courses that I've put up so far. I'll be putting up more courses very soon. Uh, this lecture, of course, is there in the ARM 7 course. We have seen the theory of ARM. We have seen the whole instruction set. Four or five videos are there of the instruction set itself, where every instruction I have taught and explained in detail. And now comes programming. So this is all a part of the ARM course. Select the course, uh, make the payment. As soon as you make the payment, the course becomes active. The course is active for six months. You can watch the videos as many times as you like. Learn it, practice it, learn it again with a different perspective. Then you'll have different kind of doubts. Better than the doubts of a, uh, of a, of a newbie. Uh, you, once you've seen programming, you've seen what can happen, what cannot happen. When you rewatch the videos, you understand the things spoken much better and you have a fresh set of doubts and that's how you grow and you understand the subject. So we don't put a restriction on how many times a video can be played. Watch them as many times as you want till the time you're absolutely thorough with the concepts and then practice programs. There's no end to practicing. A teacher shows you the playground, teaches you how to play. How much you practice is in your hands. Once you know how to use a simulator, you can create your own questions, run the program, check out the answers. You have a series of numbers, write a program to add only all the positive numbers, add only all the negative numbers. And so the list goes on. A person who's doing ARM has done some or the other microcontroller before. So you've seen all those bunch of programs that we've seen in 8085, 8086. Once I show you how to use an ARM simulator and how to write basically programs in ARM, then you can just redo all those programs that you've done in lower processors with ARM, practice it, check out the result, identify your mistakes, correct yourself, and then call yourself an ARM programmer. All right, this is an asset you wanna have when you go for the interview. You will thank me when your interview is over and you get the job. All the best, do well, I'll see you there. Now. Nah.